Welcome to Learning with Tembi. It's your economics teacher here, Tembi Nezingane, and we're going to have our second lesson of our learning program as PEPLAN, and we're still under the branch of economics, which is uh, macroeconomics, and that is still under paper one of economics grade 12. Taking it from the circular flow we did in our previous lesson, we have noted that we have two kinds of flows in the economy, and that is the money flow and the real flow, where we did say that the real flow refers to the flow of actual goods or services and factors of production from one participant of the economy to another, whereas money flow refers to the income and and also the spending by the participants of the economy. So real flow and money flow therefore move in different or opposite direction. Just to refresh memories, let us look at the circular flow diagram and uh, so that we can identify the real flows and money flows. If you can check from households, we've got an arrow moving from households to the factor market, then to the government and that arrow is a solid line it's showing the movement of factors of production via the factor market to the government and also we have a similar line from household to the firms via the, fac the, the factor market and it's a solid line wherein households are selling their factors of production to firms so that movement by itself the movement of factors of production from household to firms is the real flow and therefore firms or the government will pay for those factors of production and when they pay for factors of production now it's a payment and that becomes an, a, a money flow so money flow and real flows are flowing in opposite directions and money flows are represented by dotted lines in this circular flow model and real flows are represented by solid lines in this circular model. Not only did we mention uh, real flows and money flows in the economy, but we also spoke of monetary inflow and monetary outflow in the economy. A good example of this was the exports and imports. We said imports, we consider them to be an outflow whereas exports are considered to be a monetary inflow. We are now going to refer to all outflows as leakages in the economy and all inflows as injections in the economy. Imports are not the only leakages we have in the circular flow. We also have savings. Savings, savings refers to the income that participants choose not to spend but they put it aside for future use so when income is not spent it's saved either by firms or by households and those savings will flow out of the circular flow to the financial sector the financial sector comprises of the financial institutions or the banks so what the banks will do they will use the savings to borrow participants when they are in deficit so please also note that if borrowings exceed the savings, then the money component in the circular flow will increase. Our second leakage here is taxes. Taxes can either be indirect or they can be direct. An example of an indirect tax, we can be talking about the value added tax on the product. And also we have direct tax which um, an example of that can be the income tax. So taxation is actually a compulsory contribution to the state revenue, which is levied by the government on households or firms income. When taxes are paid to the government, it represents a leakage from the money flow in much the same way as savings. Only in this case, there is no choice. So with savings, you do choose to save some of your income. But with taxes, you do not choose to be taxed, but taxation is imposed on you. And lastly, the most famous one is your imports, which is the money spent on goods produced outside the country. So not all the consumption is 
of goods that are totally domestically produced. Participants will spend some of their income on imported goods and services and on goods that were produced using equipments which were imported from other countries. So although the money that participants spend on goods initially flows to domestic producers, it will eventually find its way abroad when domestic manufacturers purchase imported imports to produce those products. So the expenditure on imports constitutes the third withdrawal from the money flow. This kind of expenditure flows abroad. So the total leakages are simply the sum of net savings, net taxes, and also the expenditure on, um, on imports. Again, exports are not the only injections we have in the economy. We also have investments, and investments refers to the spending by firms on capital goods. So this is the money that businesses spend, which they borrow or obtain from various financial institutions. They may either be from past savings or loans, and through a new issue of shares also. They may invest in property and plant or equipment. They may also spend money loaned on building up inventories and also buying intermediary goods or raw materials. Secondly, we have government spending, expenditure of the government sector. That is uh, when the government spends money on goods and services produced by businesses to produce social and economic services and also to provide infrastructure. This counts as an injection. And lastly, we've got our famous one, the exports. So the exports, uh, we are referring to the money received from goods which are sold to the rest of the world. Money flows into the circular flow from abroad when foreign residents buy our exports of goods and services. So the total injections in the economy are therefore a sum of investment a sum of uh, a government expenditure and also export. So what kind of a relationship do we have between leakages and injections? We say that we have indirect links between savings and investments. We also have indirect links between taxes and government spending. We also have indirect links between imports and exports. And what do we mean by this indirect link? Uh, when it comes to savings and investments, if more money is saved in banks, more money will be available for banks to loan to businesses for investment. However, the decision to save and to invest are taken by different groups, and this amount may differ. So there is no guarantee that an amount of savings in the economy will be equal to the amount of investments. Also, when it comes to taxes and government spending, if income from taxes increases, therefore the government will be inclined to increase their expenditure or to also decrease taxes. But still, there is no guarantee that the amount of taxes will be equal to government spending. The government may spend a different amount from the income it receives from taxes. It might budget for a surplus or a deficit. Thirdly, the relationship between imports and exports. If imports increases, foreigners' inc income will also increase. And as a result, they will be able to purchase more of the country's exports. So that does not also guarantee that the amount we spend outside the country will be equivalent to the amount spent by other countries in our country. So exports may be more than imports or vice versa. Therefore, it is possible that injections may not be equal to leakages. As much as there is no guarantee that leakages uh, may be equivalent to injections in the economy, but well, an economy may be able to achieve that. And when an economy achieves that, we say that an economy is in equilibrium. 
So an economy is in equilibrium when households spend all of their money uh, or they spend all of their income, meaning that there are no savings in this case. Another thing is that uh, an economy may achieve an equilibrium when businesses reinvest all their profits back into production. Thirdly, when production meets demands, meaning that uh, when all the goods and services produced in the country are consumed. And lastly, when everyone earns enough money to purchase what they need. Uh, when we've got full employment in the economy. And I think this is what each economy or each country strives to achieve, that we get full employment, we reinvest everything that we, uh, all the profits that we receive, all the production must meet the demand and households must spend all their income in order to achieve an economic equilibrium. So these are the conditions. We say that an economy is in equilibrium when the total output is equal to the total spending or when leakages are equal to injections or when total expenditure is equal to total income. When the economy is not in equilibrium, it's either leakages are greater than injections or leakages are less than injections. So when leakages are less than injections, we, we say the economy is growing or is increasing and the demand for goods and services increases as much as production increases. Also, income in the economy will increase because we will be having less leakages in the economy. So opposite will be the case if leakages are greater than injections. So the economy will be shrinking or decreasing. We will have less uh, demand for goods and services when the leakages are more and also production will drop and there will be less income in the economy. And that comes to the end of our lesson. The plan here was to have the national accounting aggregate as our second lesson but I realized that we have missed the flows uh, and also leakages and injections in our first lesson. So in our next one, we are definitely going to cover the national accounting aggregates. And thank you for joining this learning experience. I hope you guys had a great time and you did benefit a lot. So if you wish to arrange for a one-on-one -on -one lesson, you can email me on tembinetengane at gmail.com or you can just drop a call on 079-674-57. Six, seven. I'm so willing to help you guys in whatever challenges you're going through with regard to economics.